So something I want to know is that you decided to go get your master's. I wanted to know like what inspired you to do that and how has it been? All right. So the inspiration came from the fact that I wanted for the job search that I did to get this job, I really wanted to move into machine learning or, well, at the time, artificial intelligence, I wasn't uh, informed enough to know that it would be machine learning or data science at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I was looking, and this was in 20, like 18, 2019, they still heavily wanted people with PhDs. Now, mind you, I don't plan on getting a PhD, but I'm like, if I can learn enough to get a master's, I'm smart enough, I know I can do this. Yeah. The PhD is typically like a gatekeeping thing. And I, I know between my personality and my smarts, I can I can give my way into somebody's role. Um, so I was looking for those. And I mean, with no degree, they wouldn't even give me the time of day. I was like, oh, well, you know, get some experience and maybe come back later. So that's how I ended up with another software engineering job, which I still like, but I just wanted to try out something else. Um, So that is why I went back and got my master's because I still wanted to do those things. And I know how hard it is to get in the door without a degree. Um, And of course, being a black woman, I I don't have the same things. Even if I was to go self-taught, I don't have the same privileges for people to just trust that I would know what I was talking about. So the ability to get a job and then just having that credibility is why I decided to go. And I chose Berkeley because to me, it's the closest you can get to going to Ivy League without going to Ivy League. Um, You know, they're very well known for their computer science program. So chose Berkeley for that reason. Um, And then was that the only part of the question? Okay, I, I wanted to ask you what went in, how did you choose where you wanted to, well, I guess you just answered that part. Okay, so I want to know. Yeah, I guess there's a couple more things about how I chose. So it had to be online because I wasn't going to move for it. That was not going to happen. And then it also, I didn't want to take a GRE. So anybody who didn't do GREs, I was like, I'm applying there. And I knew it was going to be harder because I'm sure grad programs that don't do GREs were getting a crazy number of applications at the time. And then it needed to have some type of notoriety, like the Berkeley program specifically, it has always been online. Um, They didn't switch online during COVID. So that was like, yeah, so they were ready for this. They were rooted, they were in place versus schools that had to kind of switch it on. I was like, I don't know if that'll be as great of an experience. Okay. And then how has it been so far? Any favorite classes? classes you don't like I follow your tweets I know some yeah. of them but. yeah okay so my favorite class so far uh I was you know what data engineering was actually a pretty cool class it was something that I really hadn't focused on really hadn't done before so I also did a machine learning boot camp last fall oh, yeah. um, and so I've I've learned a lot in general um but in the data engineering they really focused on like data cleansing and just handling the data in general versus every class I had taken before that. It wasn't an afterthought, but data cleansing and just the data pipeline was a means to an end versus something that you really focused in on. And it was nice to learn about that because your data really is the backbone of everything that you will do in machine learning and data science. So that's probably probably been my favorite class because I got to learn so much, but it wasn't stressful. Um, So I love that. My least favorite class has easily been my statistics class. It was so stressful. I will never forget on the first day of class, they were like, yeah, so we're teaching y'all all all this. um, This week, the stuff y'all are in this week, we used to teach in three weeks. And the stuff that y'all will learn in the first um, three weeks, we used to teach in like six or eight. So oh it's going to be really tough, but y'all will be able to do it. And I'm like, why do y'all do that? Exactly. Like, you're, <laughs> why do y'all do that? That's a sign. <laughs> and the thing is, I was the first, I was part of the first group to take this like redone stats class. And even oh, the people man. that had taken it the semester before said that it was a really hard course. So if y'all were teaching slower and the course was still hard, what on earth made you speed it up? Yeah. Um, and the other thing was that was very theoretical and while I do love the theory I love to know like I love to get to the very basic level 
or the, the smallest level you can get to and, and know every little thing about it. And that would be awesome if I had more time. But when you only have 14 weeks to master statistics and specifically high level statistics that is used for machine learning, like it's, it's not fun. It's not enjoyable. Um, so it was really, that's easily the hardest class I've taken in my entire life. Wow. Like, I'll never forget that experience. Never. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the sort of your village as if your villain origin. Yes, look at that statistics class easily. Villain origin story. Yeah, I wanted to know. So there's a lot of math involved with artificial intelligence and machine learning. Okay, so you have to take a lot of math classes. Yeah, so honestly, if you are a math major, you will probably excel. Mm. Um, I don't, you know what's funny? I don't think math majors excel in like software engineering. Like I think they still have to put in a lot of work yeah. to learn to code. Mm -hmm. um, I think they, they're good once they learn to code, but like they still have to do that work. But I think that if you are a math major and you want to do machine learning, it will probably be like kind of easy for you to jump in. Wow. Because computer science, you know, our degree is half math, but if it was all math, we would have such a better introduction to the kind of stuff you need for machine learning. Cause mm -hmm. I feel like we learned the baby math and I put that in quotes cause we know it's not baby but compared to what you need for machine learning, it's baby. Um, like we got to stop at what linear algebra and discrete math. Yeah. You have to go past that to really be able to stay, understand this machine learning stuff. Um, so it's, it's so much math, honestly this is also controversial machine learning is just hardcore statistics and linear okay. algebra, you know like first. <laughs> i had i had seen people make jokes about it but no it it really is like you need to be strongly rooted in that stuff yeah i took a recommender systems class in undergrad and i hated it it was so much formulas and math yeah. and all that stuff yeah. i wasn't expecting that like the math your code is all math like it's so yeah wild. yeah it's so wild and I don't want to discourage people because there's a lot of people that kind of now make content around like oh become a machine learning engineer in xyz amount of time there's a difference between like just being able to use libraries and call functions and just plug in variables and actually knowing how to do machine learning the people that do the first thing they will get jobs they'll make a good amount of money they are not going to last as long. Like if all you do is know how to use libraries and you don't actually know what's going on on the back end, you're not going to last that long. The people that actually learn how this works and it's not a black box to them, they're going to last a long time and probably be able to make some advancements. I'm excited about being able to do that. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. I remember one assignment, there was a library, but we had to code the actual, what the library does and mm -hmm. it was so it was so hard like I, I'm yeah. just like seeing it in my head we use python and all that and oh my goodness yeah because it's the same thing for software engineering if all you know is libraries and you yeah. don't because of course you are never going to rewrite a library why would you do that but when you run into issues or you're like trying to do something that's low-key never been done before if you don't understand how that really works it's just going to be so tough yeah, you made a post too that I really agreed with. It was a while ago. You were like, people are saying software engineering is just copying and pasting. And we say that as a joke. But at the end of the day, when you're first learning, you really should know what you're copying and pasting yeah. just because like when you run into something similar, but it's not on Stack Overflow or what if it doesn't work yeah. exactly? And I totally agree. Like in the and beginning, I mean, spend some time. Yeah, because I mean, I can't tell you how many times I have talked to an engineer, like they've done some work and I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm like, oh, but we probably need to change this thing. How does this work? And it's crickets because you don't know how it worked because you copy and pasted it and didn't take the time to learn what you copy and pasted. So yeah, be careful with that. Yeah, yeah. And then um, something I wanted to know is, and you, you might not have an answer to this, but how do you balance everything? <laughs> like everything you're doing, full-time job people, full-time job. Yeah. Full-time job, cool. hobbies, family, content creation, like, yeah, do it. This, I get this question a lot, no matter who I'm talking to, people ask me that. And I really don't know. Like, it, it all works out somehow. 
And I will say, I make sure that I take breaks. I, that is the one thing I will never budge on. I will always take a break. If I'm tired, I'm going to bed. Like, I think if you get a good amount of sleep, because obviously with the amount of stuff I'm doing, I don't get a ton of sleep. Okay. I'm gonna be honest with you, but I still minimum six hours. If I oversleep, I oversleep. I don't care because the thing is, if I don't sleep enough, if I don't eat enough, you know, if I'm not actually taking care of my body, the work that I do in all these things is going to suck. Right. You show up to work tired. It shows right? You, you, you don't do as well. Stuff that should take you an hour is taking you three or four hours because you're exhausted. And that's why I just go to sleep. Um, and then I really just have to prioritize like what is important to me in general and what is important to me that day. For example, right now in the summertime, what's important to me is having fun and living life. So I took a semester off school because I really can't do that as much as I want to when I'm in school. Yes. Yeah. And now, you know, I'm dipping more into my hobbies a lot right now, right? Like if y'all watch me, you know, I've been posting a lot more and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so during this time, I'm actually trying to figure out how to balance or once I go back to school, I'm trying to create systems so that it doesn't mess up what I have going right now. That's so important. You know, some people say like, how do you stay motivated while learning to code? Well, it's more Mm -hmm. of like, how do you put systems in place so you can stay disciplined? Well, yeah. So that's so real. And then the last question I wanted to ask you about like grad school is any advice to people applying? I don't know if you tweaked your resume, like I'm so out of touch with this. (laughs) Yeah, I did not do anything special to my resume. I prepared my resume just how I would for a job. Um, As far as applications went, I put my heart and soul into like those essays, especially because I was applying to places that did not require GRE. Um, But I mean, when you apply to grad school, also you have to pay for those applications. Okay, I know people pay for undergrad, but at my school, we had a lot of waivers. And so you would just give us waivers to apply to colleges, yeah. Um, And so I didn't really pay for any college uh, applications, but yeah, so for graduate, I was very, picky on who I was applying to because I was spending money at that point and I mean it's like a hundred dollars it's like you're gonna get in that's crazy (laughs) um and so I, I really put my heart and soul into those and I'm not terrible at writing but I know that's not one of my best things so I spend a lot of time revising you know I I probably wrote four or five drafts before I got to the final thing um and just be very honest and like show that you really want to be there. Um, Because I mean, of course I look around and I'm like, dang, some of these people seem so much smarter than me, but we're all in the same room. Girl, you're so smart. You are so smart. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) Well, okay. So I I am, and I don't discredit that, but I meet other people. I'm like, geez, Louise, like you are like, you're up here. And the other thing is, I know they put in a lot more time when it comes to this stuff than I do. And I res- I respect that. I'm like, that yeah. is so cool. But I, I just have so many things I want to do, again, prioritizing. But um, yeah, I think really putting your soul into those essays is what's going to get you there. Because a big part of grad school, when you graduate, they, they know people are going to know you went to Berkeley or whatever school you choose. They want graduates who not only are smart and can do the classes, but they also want graduates that will represent them well. And yeah. when you yeah. speak to the public, when you go out in the world, they want to make sure that you, you know, can do that. And so those essays show like what kind of communication skills you have and that kind of thing. And that's the biggest thing. I mean, I guess GRE, but again, did not take that. So no testing. I, I love the path you took. <laughs> it makes sense. Ended up great. <laughs> All that matters is that you get the degree. So you should definitely make it as easy as possible for yourself while you're going through. Yeah. For grad school, I didn't test out of the intro to Python course. Why? I don't care. I'm just here to get the degree. Nobody's going to care about what classes I took. So yeah. I took that course because it was easy. It was cake for me. Oh, yeah. Something you said you took the beginner one in undergrad. When I took my first computer science class, I took the harder, more advanced, like they had one that was in one quarter and you could take the other one that was split up in two. I took the yeah. one quarter one. Big my mistake. Gosh. Like, girl. Yeah. 
I was so optimistic. I can do anything I put my mind to and all. <laughs> and you can, but like make it easy for yourself. Yes, exactly. Make it easy for yourself. Yeah. So you not have a strong foundation. But then I wanted to do some fire questions while I have okay. you here to end this out. So if I was a beginner and you had to recommend a language I start off with as a beginner, what would you recommend? Python. Okay. Back end or front end or machine learning? <laughs> Machine learning, but if, if it's back or front, uh, front. Okay. And then um, if you could give one piece of advice to people that are not sure if they're smart enough to learn coding and get into this, what would you tell them? Keep trying and give it some time. Love you it. Need, you need more than a couple months. Yes, exactly. And then um, I guess I know your answer for this. Well, you also did a boot camp. So boot camp, computer science degree, or self-taught? Degree, every time. <laughs> I'm a degree advocate. And that's so rare to hear these days. So if you want to know why, oh, wait, oh, yeah. No, I was going to say, I think it is, which is why I'm choosing to be very vocal about it. I feel like everybody's like, don't waste your money in college. You're not wasting money by going to college. I promise you're not. Everybody does not have the discipline to be self-taught. And even if you have the discipline, it's not going to click as well. It's like building those networks, all of that kind of stuff. And boot camp, I didn't like boot camp. It was too fast. And they're teaching you to get the job versus really taking time to teach you the concepts. Um, and you would have to go self-learn anyway. So I think that, you know, I'm sure there's people that get degrees and like, damn, I wish I would have went to boot camp. And that's a fine choice, but I think we need more people to be speaking positively about degrees so that people know that it's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of money. It's just a different way to get there and a different experience. Exactly. I feel like it's what's best for you. You know, like, yeah. I feel like for me, I'm so impressed by self-taught people because I try and learn so many different things like guitar and I just quit it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, for, yes. you know? So to have the discipline to go this and to create your own curriculum too, like yeah, it's all of that. When you go to school, it's done for you. <laughs> like I, I, I'm not doing all that. I can't. Yeah. But then I also see if you're transitioning careers, you have kids yeah. and all that stuff, you want to go boot camp. I'm like, it makes sense. Just make sure you choose a good boot camp and do research right. into that because they're not all created equal. Yeah. And then, yeah. So yeah, thank you for sharing that perspective. She has videos about this on her channel. If people want to find you, where can they find you? You want to find me every social media platform instagram twitter Snapchat. no 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 snapchat don't <laughs> i was snapchat. like I you won't even find me on snapchat to be honest but um <laughs> instagram twitter what else do i use tiktok and youtube they're all at almesia um i also have a discord where people can ask me questions because people love to ask questions but sometimes are shy to like leave a comment mm -hmm. so have the discord um yeah love chit chatting with people I answer questions as best I can, so. Yes, and we didn't even get into technical interviews, but like maybe that'll be a different one, but buy our data structure flashcards. <laughs> buy the flashcard. We don't promote those enough. We, we don't, really. we don't, <laughs> but we still get sales though. <laughs> yeah, we work so hard on those. We need to promote them way harder. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks, Meezy. Yes, see y'all later. Bye. Bye.